on the road of life, and you are not alone here. We will have more time to greet each other after the service and enjoy refreshments and visit the bookstore just off to the left <laughs> of our community room, which is directly through the doorway behind you on the opposite side of our uh, lib lobby, because the other word's too hard to say this early after that song. <laughs> Right now, it is time for us to have our community greeting. We call it Vitamin H. We are a hugging community, right? So say it with me. Hi, my name is fill in the blank, and I'm a hugger. If you're not a hugger, please simply extend your hand for a welcoming handshake. And now John Booth will give us a financial update, and George, our prayer chaplain, will read the daily word, the spiritual power of the month, and he will bless the prayer box. Good morning. Uh, I'm here to give uh, a financial update on the permanent spiritual home, uh, also known as, as the building fund now that we're in, our permanent spiritual home. The first thing, this is a two-part message. The first part is uh, where we are uh, with the uh, permanent spiritual home fund, and then I'll talk a little bit about commitments. But I want to draw your attention to uh, this chart, God Can, and uh, I want you to notice the, uh, the uh, silver on the uh, red bar. This means that we have exceeded $600,000. <laughs> and listened again to my children and grandchildren who all spoke and started, you want me to stop? <laughs> No. Forgot where I was. Okay. And I looked out at the video and saw so many faces that are here today who had come to help. I can't take time to cry now, but, and I, I was so deeply grateful. So thank you to those of you who came. After he watched the video, he said, tomorrow is the anniversary of the, the fifth year of my wife's death. He had bought a, um, a bench on a golf cart path in the villages in her honor, and he said, I always go and talk to her. And I said, well, would you mind if I go and talk to her too? And he said, well, I would be deeply honored if you'd do that because no one has ever done that before. And I said, well, why don't we have a little service? We'll do a prayer. We'll do a meditation. I'm going to bring a plant, and I'm going to put it in your yard for a um, memory garden. And so the next day, we went to his bench, and it was a very intimate, wonderful time that we had honoring the memory of his wife. And then he said, you know, you're the only person who ever came to talk to her with me. So in closing, if I can take a deep breath, I have to say that grief and gratitude often go in tandem, hand in hand. And there are so many things that we can do to help people in grief move through so that that gratitude will bubble up. Thank you. of truth thou hast for me place in my hands the wonderful key thou shall unclasp and set me free silently now I wait for thee ready my God thy will to see 
Thank you. All right, so let us uh, relax in our chairs as they support us. And let us take a few deep breaths together. And as we focus this morning on love and the eyes being the way the heart sees, and the beautiful moment of truth by Sandy. Let us give thanks for all the love that we show each other in this spiritual community. This is a time that hearts are open wider during this Christmas season. And as we relax and just follow our breath, breathing in and breathing out, we just feel the love that is in this sanctuary. Let us spend some time in the quiet. And as we gently and easily bring our attention and our awareness back to this time and place, we might feel the cool breeze on our cheeks. And we give thanks that we, that we are really, uh, I would say, entitled to be at this moment of time where we are not at war and where we're able to really enjoy and self-actualize. 
And we pray that the Holy Spirit moves in and through each one of us to show us how we can express more of our love in the world as we change the world to be more loving. Amen. going to do something a little different today. I want to lead you in, a, it's an affirmation, a chant called the heart of the mother. I'm going to start you off, and the words are going to be up here, but after I start you, you follow them. My helper's over here. Okay, so listen to what I'm doing. I'm going to do something different. You do with them. I hope you like it. I hope it touches your soul.
Good job. Good job. Thank you. So stand forewarned, you're going to be humming that song all week. Because <laughs> I found it a couple weeks ago, and I was humming it for a couple weeks, and I couldn't wait for um, John to do it. Okay, I want to thank uh, some of the people who have worked in our uh, ministry this week. That covers me, in case I don't remember everybody. Uh, Barbara Richards and all the bookstore volunteers for a successful bookstore sale last week. Thank you. Uh, give thanks for the platform team. They help us out every week, and we appreciate them. We give thanks for those of you who took the opportunity to uh, do some of Michael Rice's workshops and classes. Uh, I know that was successful. I had a really busy week and out of town uh, earlier in the week, so I didn't get to attend, but I'm sure it was beneficial. And thank you for the willingness to be part of the ASAP prayer team. And Joni Spires uh, for working with our financials. And uh, the outreach team. You know, the outreach team takes all our outreach food and clothing and paper goods. And we appreciate the, uh, especially the Whitmans who do that. And, uh, and uh, the Lathams, they do it when Stella and, and Joe can't do it. And then Donna Keaton. So we appreciate all of those. And just a couple of announcements. Uh, we have quite a few classes beginning the beginning of January. So if you're going to be out of town, you might want to look at that uh, activities center today. And uh, let us know about the metaphysical movies because uh, uh, if we're uh, not going to, we're not going to kind of show them for three people, which has been the attendance. All right. So love our divinity. So as we continue to progress through the Advent season, we had peace last week and uh, love this week. And those two are tied, aren't they? Because if you're loving, you're at peace. And uh, love is that one spiritual faculty. It's that one that humankind cannot live without. It's said to be the highest vibration. And God is love. We are from God, and so love is our divine inheritance. And uh, like most spiritual faculties, it takes uh, both the masculine and the feminine aspects of the faculty to encompass all of what it is. And Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, writes in his chapter on love from the 12 powers, of all the daughters of God, love is undoubtedly the most beautiful, enticing, and fascinating. She is by nature exceedingly timid and modest, but when roused, she is bold and fearless in the extreme. That's quite a, uh, a little bit of writing there. So even though love is the most essential quality for humankind, it seems to be the faculty that as humans, we have the most challenges with. Can anybody ever relate to that through the decades? Yes. And so the fact of the matter is, love by itself is spirit, and love is perfect in that it is of spirit. So different from love are all the sense emotions we can feel around the faculty, but love is not an emotion. So one of the best definitions that uh, I have learned for love is love is the feeling and knowing our oneness with others and truly desiring good for everyone. And it's really understanding that we are one global family. We are one. And so we want to wish everybody good. And that's really being our Christ self. That's really being uh, that divine love. So because so many people have uh, love challenges or problems, there's confusion about true love that's in the soul and the emotions around love. God is love, so we are love. And so there's no intention that this spiritual faculty can cause anybody suffering or harm. And one of the, uh, of course, there's uh, uh, 
dozens of uh, both the Old Testament and the New Testament characters that come to mind, but one of the ones that came to mind uh, as I was doing this this week was Joseph. You know, Joseph, no matter how harshly his, Joseph the robe of many colors, who wore the robe of many colors, Joseph, no matter how harshly his brothers taught him, his brothers treated him, he was of, remained in the state of love. Uh, he was just able to stay in that condition. And that's the condition as we evolve in our consciousness that we want to stay in no matter what happens. So that takes a truly understanding heart, it takes a mind that is less quick to judge, and it takes eyes that see with the eyes of the heart. So we have a YouTube for you this morning that actually a couple people sent me, and so we'd like to show that to you now as we lower the lights and turn that on. So, you know, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about, um, you know, how at one time it was the Jews, at another time it was Irish, at another time it was Italians, at another time it was anybody who wasn't Christian, uh, at another time it was uh, the North against the South in this country, you know? 
it just seems like it's uh, kind of been our history where it's somehow always somebody. Did you notice uh, in that YouTube how it just took one person? And we are the light of the world. And uh, so we are the people to take that one step forward when, when uh, many people are in the neutral zone and not quite sure. Uh, we are the ones to take that step. Let's see what else here. So we must ask ourselves, uh, what makes our hearts close down? And it usually is fear. And what makes that fear come up and arise in us? I can remember uh, being actually in an oncology office uh, with my partner about 10 years ago, picking up a magazine, it was either Time or Newsweek, and it had a, a group of uh, men who were not, who were obviously not American, who were uh, different than white-skinned, and uh, who the marketing of it and the capture was totally to induce fear, because you could tell they were angry, and uh, anybody who looked at that cover, if any of you remember it, uh, that's what it was for. And so uh, we have to really be careful about what we let into our minds, don't we? And uh, so one of the caveats I would offer is uh, the news you let in, let it be at a minimum, and let the minimum that you let in be broad-based. So quality broadcasts that uh, are on the internet uh, for global affairs, so you have, and we all have, more than one perspective, don't we? And uh, so then we can have the ability to discern what's maybe behind how things are marketed. And, uh, you know, when we think about love and we think about love being pure and perfect, we can all recount the times that we had the golden opportunity to hold a newborn infant. Remember that? They're just pure love, they're pure innocence, and that is because they are just recently from God and full of pure love. So how can we practice love? Well, one of the ways we can practice love, as we do in this community most of the time, is by accepting one another as we show up. And so sometimes we may, in our minds, think that someone is not behaving uh, exactly as we would like. We might think that somebody is hostile or uh, judgmental or dishonest or impolite. And our job is to accept what shows up. And that's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. And, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons how and why people show up. And we don't know what kind of day they had, what kind of month they had, more importantly, what kind of life they had, you know, and how people get uh, entrained and then maybe they are in that victim, martyr archetype for quite some time before they realize they can be free of it. Our work is only to accept. And we can express love by helping one another. You know, if we uh, follow the teachings of our elder brother, uh, we're not serving if we're not helping, and we're really not fully living if we're not helping. And, uh, you know, when I think about that YouTube, think about the uh, story about the Good Samaritan, and Samaritans at that time, they were the outcasts. They were the Muslims, Jews, Irish, German, North, South, uh, not yet Christian. They were the ones who were persecuted, and that's the story of the person who helped out, an outcast. And then another way we can keep our hearts open and express love is by sharing. And so next week, I know some of the food banks across the country, the amounts are down. So next week is our outreach Sunday, and that's when we get to share both food and resources and clothing and anything that you want, and we have people that uh, take them out into the community. And another way we show love is by respecting. Now, respecting, uh, we have seen a lot of disrespect in the last couple months uh, televised for us. Respecting means we don't have to agree with people 
It means we can disagree in love, but it means we can really fully listen to them and listen to where they're coming from. You know, many people say uh, often in New Thought churches, well, I like coming here because I like being with like-minded people. And there's something in me that just kind of, uh, I don't like that too much. I like, I like that we're people who come together because we have similar values, but I hope we all think differently and challenge one another because I think the true creations for humanity come together when we of different minds really collaborate and co-create. And we practice love, and this is, I think, particularly important at this time, when we listen to someone. Not everybody has happy holidays, and not everybody has happy memories of holidays through their lifetime. And so this is the time when just the gift of listening, uh, not asking a lot of questions, and not saying, oh yeah, I remember there was a time when that happened to me, but really just giving someone the gift of your presence and listening. And just another little Fillmore reading in that same chapter, love is from God and it is given to us in its virgin purity. It is the pure essence of being that binds together the whole human family. Without love, we should lose contact with our Mother Earth. And losing that, we would fly off into space and be lost in the stardust of unborn worlds. Gravity is mortal man's name for love. By the invisible arms of love, we are held tight to Earth's prolific bosom, and there we find the sweetest home in all the universe. All love of home is founded on our innate love for our planet. And so uh, as we show love to one another, it's always really important to figure out if we're using all of our resources respectfully. Are we using what we need and not more? And are we realizing, as many of us are, that less is more? And has each of us made a commitment to, to live more sustainably? You know, it's easy to make that commitment when we realize that our consuming less brings a higher quality of living to many people on the globe. So we as a spiritual community can show our love for our global family. It's one of the reasons our invocation song says we send our love over the oceans, over the mountains, and over the seas. So by our prayers and by our words and by our songs, they can actually feel that love. And there's a, a poem by Edwin Markham that I'd like to close with. He drew a circle that shut me out. Heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Sacred night, and I, and I sing to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, 
are also in the faces of people going by. I see friends sharing hearts, saying, how do you do? They're only saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, I watch them grow, they'll learn much more than I'll ever know, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world, yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. <laughs> All right, and uh, we got some great ushers here today, I see. All right, so let us all join consciousness up here. And let us really give thanks for where we are. Uh, where we are in our state of life and where we are in the world. And where we are is we have so much to give. And so we give thanks for the givers of these gifts. We give thanks for all these resources that are gonna go forth, multiply many times over, and create more good and more love and more peace in the world. And for this, we bless them in the name and through the nature of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you. All right. All right, now we're going to get in our two peace circles. And if you're new, you want to be able to see the screen if you don't know it. Not really. No sound.